Welcome back to my little corner at CNC Labs. Today we're going to be covering June 2024 production updates. A lot has happened in the last month, so I guess we'll get right into it. First of all, I just want to let you guys know that if you want to get the full breakdown of everything, the links, the information, everything is on the blog. This is just supplementary for the blog, so make sure to ch read the blog and we got lots of good stuff about everything there. I also want to ma mention that now that the company's gotten larger and we're doing more stuff, the blogs have also gone a lot longer. I want to also let people know that if there isn't any significant updates to stuff, I probably won't write it explicitly in the blog. You can just read the previous update for the latest information about whatever's going on here. Things move quickly at CNC Labs, so I still the blogs will still be very long anyways. First and foremost, Long Mill Mark 2.5 is getting ready for shipping. We should have some of them getting started shipping out this week. We just got all of the SLBs in, the next 1,500 boards. So those are going through testing and assembly. There's also a post that Chris has written called Introduc Introducing the Long Mill 2.5, which basically covers all the differences and changes and the things that are same between the two versions. Just so everyone knows, right now we're in batch nine, which means every machine going out forward will be a Mark 2.5. And um, you know, you can place an order for that now. Super long board. So we shipped out the first 500 boards, now getting started on shipping out the second batch of super long boards, which is part of the 1,500 boards. Additionally, we have started testing and fixing up things on the SLB EXT. There was a couple changes to the capacitor values and the resistor values to tweak, but those have been manually updated for the first 50 units and production for SLB EXT is also starting for the, 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 the second batch of alt mill machines. We have a lot of progress for the alt mill project and we're getting ready for the shipping. As we discussed in the last update, we have a couple parts that are the stragglers, um, one of them being the closed loop stepper motor cables. Those are being custom manufactured, the custom manufactured wire harness so that easier to wire. Those wires are expected to be on a plane this week and arrive in the next week or two. Those are likely to be the parts that are going to hold us up in production the longest. Based on the estimates from the, the production team, we should be able to ship machines out second or third week of June. So we are a bit delayed by a couple of weeks, but we're continuing to work on getting everything together. There's a lot of stuff. You can check out pictures and information on the blog, but we set up a bunch of jigs to do the assembly. Packaging has been completed and are expected to arrive this week or next week. Uh, we have all the graphic design done. We also got the spindle and the VFDs for the alt mill as well. So those are getting tested and assembled. The team is also working on the resource development and the assembly video and the assembly instructions on putting together the alt mill. That is happening at a breakneck, break, breakneck pace. We're also trying to hire for a customer service slash resource development person. So if that's a job you're interested in, make sure to hit us up. In our last update, we I mentioned that Johan was going to China to figure out some things with the Sprouter project. If you guys saw the live stream video from Garrett's um, podcast, I mentioned this project on the live stream and people kind of came up with the name the Sprouter, so spindle slash router. So I think for the time being, we'll call it that. Uh, we still haven't finalized the name, but it seems representative. So the point of going for, for Yohan to go to China was to kind of close the loop on some of the development challenges that we're having. Uh, one of them being how accurate and how quickly can we adjust the speed of the, the, the brushless DC motor. The assumption that we had was without a dedicated sensor or a coder on the motor, we, weren't, we would not be able to accomplish, like we were at the very limit to what a sensorless motor could accomplish in terms of speed control. Based on some of the testing that was done there, we are able to get it down pretty good, but not as fast as it could be, if that makes sense. So there's partially a decision on, is it good enough for the application or do we need to take it another step and add the encoding and the, and the sensors essentially. Yohan was also able to find a manufacturer that makes the Makita clones and also able to add the 
improved bearings and speed control as well. And if you guys don't know from the previous update, one of the problems with the Makita and one of the reasons why a lot of the Makitas were failing during the pandemic was some of the bearings weren't as good quality as they typically would use. For a product like this, we need to use high quality bearings and the right type of bearings to ensure the, the proper lifespan. We did just get a sample of it and Johan's done some testing. It doesn't seem like the power and the speed control is as good as the, the, the real Makita. I'll have to meet up with him and just kind of go through which, what we want to do with that information. The other thing that we learned is that in the stability, it, it also depends on how powerful the motor is because the motor has more power to compensate for the changes. We wanted to keep the motor, uh, the body of the Sprouter as a 65 millimeter format because that's the format that most hobbyists seem to use because most of them use a Makita router. But if we wanted to use a bigger motor, we would always have to change the size of the actual Sprouter too. So that's sort of another discussion that we're trying to figure out. We have a couple more motor samples coming on the way that we'll be doing some testing on. Hopefully those have improved performance. In the meantime, right now we have the Makita option or the Makita clone option. We have the Spindle Plus VFD option that is coming with the alt mill that will make available for the public to buy, which will kind of be like each end of the spectrum in terms of spindle slash router options. And there's still a lot more development to be done in that middle section of what this router will represent. We're kind of working on those two end options a bit more. And then that middle option, we're waiting on some more prototypes to be made to do the, do the testing. So that might be extended in terms of development for a bit longer. Another thing that I showed off uh, the other week was on Garrett's podcast, which was the panel computer. If you guys aren't familiar, Basically, with the SLB project, there was a couple, uh, a couple goals that we had. Well, one was to make the machine be able to go more quickly. The second was to make the connection more reliable while still being plug and play for the long mill. So in terms of the speed and performance of the new SLB, it is improved. One, because we have better drivers and we're able to tune out some of the resonance that came with the old drivers. And secondarily, the speed of the board itself means that some of the processes that it needs to do, like homing and probing, for example, those are done faster. The reliability of the connection is improved because of the improved electronics on the board. So it's less prone to static and disconnections and the physical, what is the word? Like physical disconnections that can happen with the old version. There is one kind of puzzle piece that we wanted to do with the original board that we kind of put down as a later thing to do, which was to have the computer on board to the board itself. So initially we had used like a Raspberry Pi module to put the computer on board the SLB, but it made the development much more difficult. And during this time, very, very difficult to find uh, the compute modules and third, G-Sender was not like working at the level of performance we wanted to on the onboard computer itself. So we decided to split them apart. The conclusion was it was kind of like a wizard behind the curtain thing, which is it doesn't matter if the computer's on the board or off the board, they both do the same thing. Initially, we had been testing with the like small B-Link computers and they're pretty inexpensive when bought wholesale. And they work pretty well performance wise, but the problem was getting the the screen and all that sort of stuff that was a whole like sourcing challenge the other idea that i ended up coming up with was to use a pos system if you guys don't know, know what a pos system or uh what do you call it payment on site system which basically is like when you go to a restaurant or, or a bar you have to like type in like your order on a touch screen right that's a whole computer that's like a panel com it's kind of like a tablet or panel computer. Those are meant to be really durable, like work in kind of extreme environments, reliable, extreme environments, convenient to use, have a touch screen, all that stuff. So I thought to myself, what if we use that computer to run a CNC machine? So I found a, a manufacturer for those panel computers 
uh, we got some samples in to do some testing, run G-Sender on them, and they seem to work pretty well. Now I'm kind of going through the process of testing that with uh, some of the people here, testing G-Sender on it, kind of getting an idea on how the user experience is going to be. The first version of the computer was a panel computer with an i5 fourth generation chip, um, pretty cheap. However, it doesn't run Windows 11. So window, it runs Windows 10, but Windows 11 eventually will be discontinued. That was sort of like not really a problem, but just something to be aware of. But it ended up there's also other chipsets like the N5095 and the N100 chips, which are newer, like made within the last two years, which are faster than the i5 4th gen and also can be upgraded to the later versions of Windows. I will get samples of those computers probably in the next two weeks. Basically, Chris went to this place that used the panel computers also. And they said the main reason why those computers break is because the fans stop working. We also found an option that was completely sealed. Uh, there's no fans, it's just one giant chunk of aluminum so that the, the, the material of the computer dissipates the heat. So those are a little bit more expensive, but would offer something that would, in theory, last a lot longer than, well, doesn't have the main I guess uh, Achilles heel, which is the fans. The samples that we're getting in will have no fans on them also. We're also kind of working through the Windows licensing stuff. I, from my understanding, most people understand how Windows works. It's a pretty good operating system, but we do have to pay for it. The other option is to lose, use Linux. We can do some customization on Linux so that user experience, but that's a bit more work for us to do. Uh, so we'll kind of figure out those things as we go along. If you guys saw pictures pre previously, uh, we did set up a touch screen and, a, and the, the mini computers on the Altmill for testing uh, way, 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 way back. And we found that because the machines have four M5, 20, uh, M5 threaded holes where the motors would screw on, we can use that to actually mount the, 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 the screen and it adds it's like a pretty good spot to put it in terms of like user experience and I've ex enjoyed using the touchscreen a lot because it's very close to the machine so I can jog it and do all my functions close by without having to walk up to the computer which would usually be on the left side of the machine that's a good development and based on the current bomb costs my guess is that the cost of the package which would be the computer the, the, the monitor mount or the, the computer mount for the machine and all the cables and everything, that will probably come out to about 400 US dollars. It's not as cheap as I would like, where it's sort of a no-brainer because for 400 US dollars, you can usually buy a cheap laptop or it, it's sort of enough money where you might be able to save some money based on by getting like an old computer and monitor and stuff like that. I think that the most ideal situation to buy a computer like this is one, you don't have another option. Uh, you don't have a computer you can use with the machine or two, you just like to buy stuff. I do have a survey that kind of asks people, what do you think about the price? What sort of features do you want to see on the computer? And uh, all those little things so feel free to check out the survey let me know what you think about this project and we can go from there there are a couple things that we can do to bring the price down one is based on volume so the price for the bombs that i got is based on 200 units the computers are pretty expensive so i don't want to tie up too much cash in buying up a lot but at around a thousand units to 1500 units we can probably save about 50 percent on the wholesale price, if you guys are like, oh, all one, all thousands of people that have long mills and alt mills and whatnot, they all want to buy a computer, then yeah, we'll get a thousand computers and we can bring the price down. But so yeah, do the survey and then I'll know. The other option is to reduce like the uh, processing requirements for G Sender and use different hardware that's cheaper. But that's probably going to be something that'll happen. Like that won't happen for a while. And uh, it's kind of like a, a, an architecture change, which is even more complicated. So all in all, the, this computer option seems like a pretty good place to start for the eventual miniaturization of CNC hardware and 
I think the computer is also good for not just long mills and alt mills, but other machines as well. So I think it's a pretty good business opportunity and kind of provides a unique solution to this sort of thing with uh, having to have a computer connected to your machine. Otherwise, I think that's all the updates for this month. We do this every month, so make sure to check out the next production update on our blog or on YouTube. And if you want to sign up for the mailing list, you can do that on our website. So that's pretty much that. I'll catch you guys next time and uh, stay tuned.